Am I supposed to be Alcoholics Anonymous? So why am I walking around with keychain letting everybody know I'm in the 12-step program? Let everybody know I'm an addict. I'm supposed to be anonymous. But Jesus said, proclaim who I am. I'm saved. So I begin to go in these places and say, my name is Warren Rudd and I'm saved. Ooh. Brother, you can't say that. Yes, I can. You in denial. No, you are. I'm born again. Because the first thing I call me is what I'm going to be. I didn't hear buttons of the mouth, the heart speaks. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. So if I want to live, I'm going to call myself, despite my condition, what I want to be. I don't care if I got high last night, I'm saved. I don't care if I lay with 50,000 women, I'm still a saint. Because the blood of Christ is going to cover me. Because I keep on saying, God, forgive me. Help me in my flesh. Amen. That's why I said I ain't got no clean time. My only clean time is with Jesus. Amen. I hope you're feeling me. So start changing your thinking. You ain't an alcoholic if you're in Christ. You ain't a whore if you're in Christ. You ain't gay if you're in Christ. You ain't a drug addict if you're in Christ. But if you think you are, then you are. Amen. Amen. Woo, don't get me fired up. Go to Luke chapter 11. Go to Luke chapter 11. Hope y'all bear with me because I don't some, some of my time a little bit. But that's all right, we're going to get through it. Luke 11. This is one of the greatest examples of a story of a man who is bound by demons. Amen? Amen? Here we go. Ready? Luke 11, start at verse 24. When the unclean spirit is going out of who? A man. He walketh through dry places, seeking what? Rest. And finding none. He said, I will return unto my house where I came out. And when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. Then go of he and take to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Amen. Did y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. So every time you take on a demon, he brings seven others. I give a perfect example. I like using me because I ain't ashamed of where I've been from. That's why I tell you, don't be ashamed. Every time I got off work, telling myself I ain't buying it. I'm going to take the money home. That thought, go get high. Yeah, yeah. Here comes the other thought, just buy one. Because yeah. yeah. they know if I hit that one, I'm going to walk home. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I go buy the one, but I wind up buying that one that was a hundred. So it wasn't no five out of back, it was a hundred dollars worth. And I paid one. Amen. Then I go hide the money under. Go out the house, go to the crack house. Sit with a bunch of other demons. Yes. And we fired it even up. Bow! Next thing after I run out when I'm going home, now the stealing demon came to me. There you go. Now I'm going home stealing my own money. Oh my God. <laughs> and I steal that, go home, go back to the crack house. Now I want to get this. I'm going to be raw, kids. Close your ears. I'm ready for a wax job. Oh. Yeah, now the sex demon comes in. <laughs> So I won't keep thinking about sex. As long as she keep you smoking, you ain't thinking. No. <laughs> now I'm lying. Now I'm a money going. She ran with the last bit of money I had. Cause I said, go get some more. And she took off and ain't coming back. Amen. Now I got to go home empty, sweat, and garnish. Walk in the house, ain't got no bill money, can't feed my child. Ready to steal the steaks and pampers and take them to the store and sell them so I can still get her. Now I got them locked. But see what you gotta understand. Every demon that comes in you, every demon that comes in you brings seven of them. And they bring seven of them. And they bring seven of them. And, and they leave you empty, swept, and garnished. Amen? Amen. But what we need to understand, what does it really take? And I preached this here before. What does it really take? to be delivered from your situation. Yeah. But Jesus says something called a what? A Holy Ghost. 
They call him the advocate. They call him the helper. But the one I like, they call him is the comforter. So the main problem I found out was I wasn't comforted. And I said, God, why not deliver? I stood on those scriptures. He shall deliver, will deliver, and can deliver, right? But I still had no comfort. And I kept falling. Why do I keep falling? I stood on that verse, a righteous man falls seven times when you get back up again. I kept yeah. back up. But I still wasn't comforted. So he took me to a story about a man in 1 Corinthians who slept with his father's wife. Yes. Committed adultery. So Paul said, kick that one out of the church. Yes. Yes. Then when I got to 2 Corinthians, what that got to do with me, Lord? I ain't seen one of my daddy's wife. Matter of fact, I don't even know my daddy. Never met him. In that sense, you know what I mean? And so I read it in 2 Corinthians. Go to 2 Corinthians for me. Chapter 7. Because what does it really take to be delivered and have rest? There must be comfort before a person can be delivered and have rest. And the saints of God should be the ones who provide their comfort and rest when brothers or sisters are distressed. Did y'all hear me? Amen. We who will call ourselves Christians need to get that rest, and I'm going to tell you why. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 7. And it says, So contrarywise, you ought to rather forgive him and do what? Comfort him. Lest perhaps such a one should be swallowed up with so much what? Sorrow. Sorrow. So there you go. So I said, Who are you talking about? But I had to go to the background books and find out that Paul was saying, Bring that guy back who was in 1 Corinthians sleeping with his father's wife. But the church wouldn't let him back in. Because they kept recognizing him as an alcoholic. They kept recognizing him as a doctor. They kept recognizing him as a crackhead. They kept recognizing him as a hoe. They kept recognizing him as a fag. So they don't want him to come in. They wouldn't let you back in. There was no love. Love says love. Uh, uh, love covers a multitude of sin, don't it? Yeah. Why are we covering people's backs? In order to help Don't compromise with them. Tell them what it is. Yeah. But still love them. Yeah. Amen. But anyway. I found out it was this guy. They wouldn't let him back in. He repented. He stopped doing the sin. Yeah. And the church wouldn't let him back in. Paul said, let him back in. Yeah. I know I said, turn him over to Satan. But now, before he go nuts and lose his natural mind, yeah. let him back in. Yeah. Church with him. Yeah. Yeah. Paul had to tell him, let him back in. So that's what they got to do when you know he said, you ain't comfortable. Now go to chapter 1 of 2 Corinthians. I said, how do I get it, Lord? And he said, right here. First he made me read verses 9 through 11. I mean, yeah, 9 through 10. And it says, But we have the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raised the dead. Who what? Now here's what I stood on and didn't work, because I didn't grab the whole thing. Who delivered us from so great a death, see that? And do deliver, and who we trust that he will deliver. Amen. I said, wow, there's my deliverance scripture. Yes. It was ready for me, but I wasn't using it correctly. So God said, now take it and go up to verse 3. I went up to verse 3, chapter 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of what? All comfort. There you go. Watch how many times you spell comfort in here. If you're writing in your own Bible, underline every time you see the word comfort or consolation. Verse 4. Who comforted us in all our tribulations. See? That we may be able to comfort them that are in trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted. You see how many times comfort is coming up? Amen. Amen. See that? See that? Amen. For as, verse 5, for as the suffering of Christ abound in us, so our consolation, another word for comfort, also abound by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your comfort or consolation and salvation which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer, or whether we be what? Comforted. In, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as you are partakers of the suffering, so shall you be also of the consolation. Amen. For we would not, brethren, have you be ignorant of our trouble which came to us out of Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength and so much that we despaired even the life. Paul said we were ready to kill ourselves. <coughs> you thought you were the only one who get depressed? Amen. Here's Paul admitting, I'm ready to kill myself. We were ready to kill ourselves. Yes, amen. But look at the comfort. Yes, yes. 
That's when verse 9 and 10 comes in. Who shall deliver? But if you ain't got no comfort, you ain't got no deliverance. Why? Because Jesus said, when I leave here, I will send you another comforter. Now, think of the word another. So that means while he was here, he was the comforter for the whole world. So he said, when I leave, I'm going to send you another comforter. But when that comforter comes, who's he going to go into? Do the believers. You know why? Because you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and immediately the Holy Ghost will be So that told me, if the comforter is living in me, I need to comfort someone else Amen. in order for them to get the difference. Are y'all not with me? So it's my job to comfort you in order to get deliverance. Those I'm giving comfort, I'll get comfort. It's a sowing and reaping process. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Y'all get anything out of it? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Let's go to Nehemiah. Chapter 4. I know we can make it there. I just hope we get blessed by this. Because see, there's also a principle with men we need to understand. In the Bible, in the New Testament, men and women are equal. In the spirit. God said, I pour out my spirit upon my sons and my daughters. Now, there is an order. Men are the leaders. But we're equal in the spirit. Amen. Amen. I just have to say that. Now, here is a principle that God put out that blew me away. How many of you would kill somebody that mess with your mama? Amen. How many going to kill somebody that mess with your kids? Let me come up to your woman. Y'all mess with my wife, we going to have a fight. Now, in warfare, in warfare, if another country comes over here to attack us, who is called the battle? Now, I know now, let me go to the battle too. But in the beginning, who are always called to go to war? Amen. The men. Yes, and the women stood in the background to do what? Nurse. Amen. Amen. See, there were some men who weren't even called to go to war. You know why? But they went to war anyway. You know why? Because they had to feed the army. Yeah. So they would make a covenant. They would split a bull. You know how you should do that blood, brother? That's all that come out of the Bible. They would split an animal so the countries would come against farmers and take their land. Farmers don't know how to fight. They know how to play and feed. So he would go to the warrior and say, protect me. So they would say, well, let our sons and daughters marry. Boom, we make a covenant vow. If they come against you, you call us, we won't fight. But while we're fighting, you better feed us. Amen. Amen. So if they know you got us, they ain't going to kick. But they would cut an animal and walk between the animal's guts and bloods and call that a covenant. They would join together. I just made a long story very short. But here's one of the principles. What did I say? Nehemiah 4? I want you to grab this, Nehemiah chapter 4, and I still believe this should fight for today. My wife showed me something I didn't even know. I always talk about men who sag. Y'all know what sagging is, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I tell them, I don't tell people where that come from, prison. You know, if men were saying they were available. Yeah. I want you to write down sag. And it don't matter that there's Caucasian brothers in here and, and Hispanic brothers or whatever, but I want you to write down sag. Now I want you to spell it backwards. Yeah. Write down Saturday and now spell it backwards. Yeah. What does it spell? Nigga. Niggas. So why do you want to sag and call yourself a nigga? Ooh, look at some of the brothers. Look at the face. What? 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 Because they know it's a neck. You ain't calling me nigga for my brother. Whoa. Yeah. So sagging, spelled backward, is nigga. Amen. I thought I'd give you something. But we deliver. Amen. Amen. My wife told me that, so y'all look at her. No, that's my baby. You see, she's my camera woman today. But here we go. But in Christ, there is no racism. There is only one blood. And that's called the blood of Christ. Amen. You understand me? If you're my brother in Christ, you are more important to me than my unsaved family. Because we are made up by the same DNA. Yes. Jesus Christ. Don't mean I don't love my family, but you're closer to me than my family by being in Christ Jesus. Amen. I don't care what color, nationality you are. Amen. Matter of fact, the brothers used to hate me. 
<laughs> when I first started teaching the Word of God, I had nothing in my Bible classes but Hispanic and Caucasian. My own brothers were jealous. They didn't like me. Amen. And I was like amazed. Why do y'all hate me? But today, don't matter what color, don't matter. Or anything. Amen. Nehemiah 4, and look at verse 14. 414. And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles, those who got it all together, and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, be not you afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and, ter and terrible. And fight for you, who? I do not know. Fight for your brother. Then who? Your son. Then who? Your daughter. Then who? Your mind. Then who? And I go run to protect mama, we gonna lose the war. Amen. If I go run to protect my children, we gonna lose the war. Amen. But if I'm fighting for my brother. 